In this video, we're going to talk through how Edpuzzle could be a great tool to use with your students. And um, just to let you know that District 127 has paid for district-wide licenses for teachers to be able to use the pro features of Edpuzzle. There's a link that got sent out in email that explains how to get connected with this paid account. But if you have any questions, reach out to an instructional coach. So let's go ahead and get started with setting up our Edpuzzle accounts, creating Edpuzzle lessons, and then assigning them through Schoology. Edpuzzle, you can just do a Google search for it or use the link that was set out to create your account. If you have an account already, click the link and then sign in, and it should connect you with Grays Lake Central High School. And that's kind of what the, the code will be um, connecting you to for the pro account. When you're here, you have a couple of options. You can find content that's already created and you can repurpose that. So it's a video with questions or notes that are embedded in it over whatever topics that you find, or you can create your own content. So let's just start out kind of simple and we'll search for content. So my kids are studying energy. So if I do a quick search, it will pop up with ed puzzles that have been created by other users that relate to energy. It'll show you the duration of the video, the questions that are involved, like the number of questions, and then the title. So if we click on this one, it looks kind of interesting, then we would be able to watch the video, see where the questions are embedded, and then off to the right, it shows the types of questions that are here. If you want to use this for your own classes, you can make a copy and then it'll allow you to put it into your content that can be assigned to your students. So if we go back to our dashboard, we go to content and my content, we now see that that video lesson is here. By clicking on it, it allows us to edit those questions. And so if you click on the edit button, it allows you to kind of see those questions and notes as you scroll through. Okay. All right, so a couple of things. You can trim videos using Edpuzzle, which is great if you just want to watch a segment of a video. You can create voiceover along with the videos to help your students learn through the video. And you can embed questions. And you can have the option of multiple choice questions, open-ended questions, or just kind of notes that pop up to get the students thinking. You can use any combination of these, any number of these. Multiple choice will grade themselves. Open-ended, you'll have to go in and actually assess their answers to assign points. As you watch the video, you can just click on a segment and then pick a question type and then build your question from there. Okay. Once you have it kind of all put together, you click finish and that'll take you back to that piece of content. So if we go back to the dashboard and we go to my content, we'll see that that video lesson is here. Now I don't want to assign any video content from Edpuzzle. I'm actually going to assign it through Schoology so that my students have easy access. Uh, so when I go to my Schoology page and I go to my course, What you should see is under add materials, there's like assignments, but off to the right here is add puzzle. So there might be a little bit of setup to do. Um, if you click on that and it comes up with any warning messages, we can definitely help you through that. But ideally it pops up with your content and you can watch the video. That's how you kind of select that video to include for your class and then assign it. Once you get to this one, just if you want to prevent skipping, it kind of makes kids answer the question before moving on, then you can assign it. And it will create what's called an LTI assignment. So if we scroll down to the bottom, here is our Ed Puzzle and the, the title of what that video was. What we're going to do is one more step to actually make this accessible to our students. So in the gear box, we're going to click Edit. When we click on edit, we see here's like our LTI provider. We don't need to worry about any of this stuff, but what we want to do is enable grading and that makes it accessible to the kids. You can make it as many or as little points as you want. If you want to have a due date, that's kind of helpful. It'll show up on the kids' calendars and then a category. If you don't want to track it to your gradebook or your PowerSchool gradebook, you can select ungraded 
If it falls in one of your grading categories and you have grade sync set up between Schoology and PowerSchool, you can select that category and then track that assignment over. And then once you're finished, you can save the changes. There's also an option to individually assign videos to certain students. So if you want to assign it just to a certain group or a certain student, just one or multiple students, you can type their names in here. And it, that assignment will only show up for those students. So you could differentiate the videos that you are sharing with the students if you wanted to. And what we're going to do then is save our changes. So now that makes this video accessible to our students. So when they click on it, it will pop up in the, the kind of window with the video that they would be able to play. Now, our view as teachers looks a little bit different because we're going to see here's all of our students. It will tell us how much of the video they've watched and if they've turned it in. If it's something that's been scored, then you'll also be able to see the grade. Right. And so if we needed to grade it because it's short answer questions, we would then be able to go in and actually see their submissions and grade them. If it's auto graded, then the grade would populate here. But it's kind of nice to see who's watched the video, how far have they gotten through it and whether or not they turned it in. So it's kind of nice. And then you can also go to questions and it will kind of show you the questions and the data from those questions. So kind of nice. All right, the only other thing we can talk about is in Edpuzzle if you wanna create your own content. So let's say you created a flipped lesson and you want to kind of build from scratch, you can go to add content and create a video or upload a video. So creating a video, if you have um, a video from YouTube that you found and you just wanna embed your own questions into it, you don't wanna use somebody else's work, you can use that. Or if you upload a video, then you just be able to choose your video file, drop it in there and then edit add questions, those kinds of things. Um, so a lot of it kind of hides out in this content, my content section, and this is where you're going to work from. And we have no limits to the number of videos that we create because of the pro accounts. Other things to keep in mind is that every once in a while, it may kind of lag depending on especially the user's internet connection. So just be patient with it and, you know, if students have questions, feel free to ask, but a lot of times refreshing, kind of retrying gives them attempt. And if a lot of students are trying to access the same video at the exact same moment, you may experience more of that lagging. So kind of spreading this out maybe as a choice option or as a work at your own pace option might help students gain access more reliably. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to an instructional coach. We wanted to make sure you had this information so that you can use it with your students. Thank you.